Hi, and you're very welcome to today's Saturday session, where our focus for today is going to be the structure and layout of the Junior Cycle Science exam for 2023. Now, before we get into the individual topics that we need to look over, I'm just going to give a quick breakdown of what the exam paper is actually going to look like in June. So we have two sections. We have section A, which is our short answer questions, and we have section B, which is our long answer questions. Now, within the short answer questions, we have 10 questions, okay? And they're worth a total of 42% of the entire paper. You are required to answer all questions. There is no choice in the junior cycle paper, so you must answer all questions and all parts of each question. And each question is going to carry 15 marks, which is going to give us a grand total for section A of 150 marks. Now, we will go through what topics kind of come up more, more often uh, later on in this. But for the most part, for the short questions, absolutely anything could come up. Section B, the long answer questions. There are six questions here to be answered. These are worth 58% of the final paper. Once again, you're required to answer all questions. There's no choice within the long answer questions either. The only difference that occurs within the long answer questions is that each question will either carry 30 marks or 45 marks. Now, usually questions 11, 12, 13 and 14, so the first four long questions, will carry 30 marks. And then the last two long questions, question 15 and 16, will carry 45 marks. So in total, that's given us 210 marks for the long answer question, giving us a grand total of 360 marks for the entire paper. Now, just based on the marks that we've seen there on the last slide about the short answer questions being 150 and the long answer questions being 210, if you wanted to achieve a distinction in science, you need to be achieving 90% of the total marks. That's 324 marks out of 360. So if we do the maths on that, that's only dropping 36 marks for the entire paper. OK, it's not much marks at all. And given that things are usually marked in multiples of three, that means we can only get 12 little parts or only miss out on 12 pieces of information in the entire paper and um, for us still to be able to get a distinction any more than that. And we would be falling down to the higher merit bracket. And then more than that, we'd be falling down towards merit and so on. So if you are aiming for a distinction, you need to be pinpoint accurate with all of your answers, making sure you know your definitions inside out and upside down. For things like calculations, you're writing down your formulae, filling them in, giving units as part of your answers. Because if you're aiming for that distinction, you cannot afford to be losing those small marks because 36 marks being able to drop for a distinction is not that much at all. So this is just the layout of the Junior Cycle Science course. This is all the learning outcomes which you need to have met over the three years of Junior Cycle Science. Now, we're not going to labour through much through these because I just want to bring your attention to the fact of how broad they are. So if we look here, maybe for Earth and Space Part 1, students should be able to describe the relationships between various celestial objects, including moons, asteroids, comets, planets, and so on. Okay, if we go down to this one here, students should be able to develop and use a model of the Earth's, Earth's on moon system to describe predictable phenomena observable on Earth, including seasons, lunar phases, and eclipses of the moon. If we have a look at one biology one over here, students should be able to describe the structure, function, and interactions of the organs of the human digestive, circulatory, and respiratory systems. Now, they're extremely broad. So if you were to look at those and try and um, guide your study using just what's on this document here, it can be very, very difficult. My students wanted to know, okay, ex what exactly do I need to know for biological world four when I'm looking at the digestive, circulatory and respiratory system? What are the exact nitty bitty bits that I absolutely must know when I go into the exam? So to help them with that, I've made a revision booklet, which I'm going to share with you as well, which will tell you exactly what I feel you need to know for every single one of those learning outcomes that are on this document here. And I'll show you that now on the next slide. So this is a couple of snippets from the exam overview booklet. So you can see here, we've chemistry ones, we've a couple of biology ones here, earth and space here, we have physics and back over to biology down here as well. Now, this is just a sample of them. In the actual booklet, the entire course overview is there. So you'll need, uh, you'll be able to see exactly what you need to know for each one of the learning outcomes. So the one we just seen there a couple of minutes ago, develop and use a model of the Earth's sun moon system. You can see here, I've broken it down to learning intentions. So what do we actually mean by a season? Can we explain and illustrate how the Earth's tilt affects the season and draw relevant diagrams? OK, we want to know those diagrams. Do you know the phases of the moon? Do you know what terms such as waxing, waning, gibbous, crescent and new moon mean? What's the difference between solar and lunar eclipses? Can you draw relevant diagrams associated with them? So this here is a lot more detailed than what you're given up here. OK, and that's the same for them all. If we have a look over here, describe um, respiration and photosynthesis. It's broken down into learning intentions that I feel you need to know. And if we have a look over here at the respiratory system, instead of just being told, know the structure and function of the respiratory system, you're told in absolute detail the absolute musts you need to know. So describe the roles of the respiratory system, given functions of the main parts. We've mentioned there about adaptations of alveoli. 
explaining how gas exchange occurs, how does exercise affect our, our breathing rate or our pulse rate, how can you test for carbon dioxide, and can you explain the characteristics of one or more diseases associated with the respiratory system. So this is a lot easier to follow than the learning outcomes that we've seen. And this is freely available to you for attending the session today. I'm going to give you a QR code on the next slide. All you have to do is scan that QR code and you'll be able to access everything you need to know for the exam in great detail. So that's the QR code there to access that document. Just use your phone, iPad, whatever device you have. If you just pause this video, scan that QR code, you'll be redirected to a OneDrive folder and you will have full access to that document. So you can really guide your study over the next couple of weeks and the next couple of months when you're preparing for your junior cycle science exam. So I'm just going to give you a couple of tips for each of the sections and how you can best prepare for them and how best to perform on the day as well. So for section A, the short answer questions, we've 10 questions answered here. I would recommend about 50 minutes for the short answer questions, leaving over an hour then for the longer questions. That's where more marks are going to come from. You have to answer all questions and make sure you are answering all questions. If in doubt, guess. I say to my students, if you're unsure of something and you leave it blank because of that, you're guaranteeing yourself zero marks for that part of a question. But if you put something down on paper, there's a chance you will get some marks. OK, and it's those marks they really do add up. It could be the difference between a higher merit and a distinction. It could be the difference between a pass and a fail. We want all of those available marks that we can get. We need to know our definitions and get straight to the point. So use that revision document to see if any keywords that I've highlighted or any definitions I've highlighted and make sure you sit them, sit down, find them in your notes copy and we learn them off by heart. OK, there's no room for waffle in a science exam. The examiners are looking for exact keywords or exact um, terms in, in the answers that you're given. And if you don't have those specific words, you won't get the mark. So you need to sit down and learn them off. Read through all the questions and put a question mark or an X beside the questions you're unsure of and come back to these at the end of the exam. OK, make sure you put something down for them. Don't leave them blank. And if in doubt, guess. And the big thing with the short answer questions is practice, practice, practice. Questions can be very repetitive here. If you have a look at the past exam papers, measurement generally comes up as a question there. Ecology would normally come up as a question there. There's normally some calculations there to do with density. So making sure you're seeing the patterns that are coming up in the questions, practicing them again and again and again, using the marking schemes to get an idea of how they're marked and what way they need to be laid out. And you'll notice the repetition there and will prepare yourself as best as possible then for that exam. For the long answer questions, give yourself about 70 minutes for these, so about an hour and 10 minutes. Read through each question carefully. One of the big things that comes back um, from my students is a lot of the questions um, might have two parts in the one sentence. OK, so the one line or two lines of a question that could actually be two or three different questions in one. If you're only reading the first part or not reading it carefully and slowly, you're going to miss the second part or the third part as well, and you're losing valuable marks. So read the question carefully and make sure you're answering all parts of the question. Now, for the long answer questions, like the short answer questions, you have to answer them all. There's no choice here. You must answer every question and every part of a question. And again, if you're unsure, guess, put something down on paper. Make sure you include enough points for full marks. So if it asks you to explain, a one word answer is not going to suffice here. OK, if it asks you to state something or name something, then yes, a one word answer might suffice. But if it's asking you to explain, we need detail. OK, look at the amount of space that's given for the question. It doesn't always mean you have to fill the space. But if it's asking you to explain, you need to start filling that space. Read the question carefully. So some questions, as I said, might have two parts in one. Students often only answer part of the question in this case. So they're not getting the full marks for the question. Then you have to answer all parts. And again, practice, practice, practice. Exam papers and marking schemes should be your best friend in the lead up to the exam just to get your head around what way the exam questions are going to be laid out, the kind of topics that are coming up, what way the answer should be. So making sure you get your exam papers, mock questions, any question you can get your hand on and you're doing them again and again and again to make sure you're as prepared as possible for that exam. So just a couple of general tips for the exam before you go in. Just make sure and try and say as relaxed as possible. All questions will be based on something you've covered in class. You're not going to be asked something that you've never seen before. It's just going to be phrased slightly different. OK, so you're going to have seen all of the content in some way, shape or form in class at some point. Read the question carefully. Is the question asking you to state, list or explain? That difference in the question word will dictate how much you're expected to write. And we can see that in the diagram over here. Name a force responsible for motion. That's a one word answer. Identify structure X. That's a one word answer. But describe how a fox is adapted to help survive in its habitat. One word is not enough here. Yes, you might write down the word teeth, but you're not explaining how those teeth are beneficial for that fox. OK, you need to fill that space and give more detail there. 
use a diagram if you can. As the saying goes, picture paints a thousand words and this can really help with your explanation and answers. Timing wise, if you get stuck, just move on. The time that you're spending agonizing over one question you can't do is taking time away from questions that you can do further on and we don't want to lose out on those marks. So move on and come back. And as I said, exam papers should be your main focus right now. Practice them over and over and over again and use the marking schemes to grade them. If you've done all the questions once, do them a second time. If you've all the questions done a second time, do them a third time. You need to get in the mindset of what exam questions look like, exam answering exam questions, and that will benefit you then in June when you come to the exam. So just before we finish today, I just want to direct you towards the exam revision website, which could be really beneficial for you when you're preparing for your exam over the next couple of weeks and the next couple of months. Now, when you log in, we can see we've video tutorials, we've quizzes, we've presentations, and we have an exam builder. Now, we're going to look at junior cycle science today, but we do have a wide range of subjects that you can choose from for junior cycle as well. So we click into video tutorials. We're going to start off with biological world, and we'll just click into the digestive, circulatory, and respiratory system. So there's going to be full detailed tutorial videos for you to watch, breaking down the respiratory system into the exact things that you need to know. So we have the structures, we have breathing occurs, and we have diseases associated with the respiratory system. Okay, all based on the revision document I shared with you earlier on. So we can click into one of the videos, you can watch it, you can change the playback speed to whatever you want. So you can go a little bit slower or a little bit faster. And it does have some um, related videos for you to watch as well. So it'll pick up, okay, maybe once you've this video watched, you'll go on and look at breathing and then the respiratory system diseases. So it will pinpoint you to other videos that you could use for your study as well. So these videos are there for the entire course. So if we go back to junior cycle science really quickly, that was one example of biological world. But if we go into earth and space, we look at the seasons, lunar phases and eclipses, video there, video tutorials based on those as well. A little bit further down, we do have MCQ quizzes. So you can click in and test your knowledge based on all of the quizzes by choosing um, answers here. So we've 10 questions. You pick whichever answers you want, submit them at the end, and you'll get your score out of 10 in this case. But it will pinpoint which ones you got correct and which ones you got incorrect. And you can do the quiz again and again and again until you get 100% and you're comfortable with that particular content. We do have PowerPoint presentations as well, which you can click into for some extra notes. And we do have our exam builder down here as well. So this includes all past state exam questions from the new course, but also from the old course as well, if there is any questions that are applicable or related to the content that we're still studying. But it does also include all of the past mock questions as well, so you can be as prepared as possible for the exam in June. So you can choose whichever topics you want. So let's say you want living things. All associated questions will pop up. You just press the plus button to add them to your exam. Go right back up here to the top and you can download the questions and the answers, okay? So you're making sure that you're as prepared as possible for that exam in June. So thanks for coming to today's session. I hope it has been of some use to you and make sure that when you are preparing for your exams over the next little while to go back over the tips, go back over the revision document and make sure and check out the exam revision website so that you can be as prepared as possible for the exam in June and do as well as you possibly can. Thanks again and I hope to see you soon.